Welcome my dear learners for this course on engineering graphics. In this module 4 we were discussing on development of lateral surfaces of solids. So far we have completed our discussion on parallel line method of development. Moving ahead from today's lecture we are beginning radial line method of development. The problem number 6 of our discussion states that a square pyramid of side of base 45 mm altitude 70 mm is resting with its base on HP with two of its sides of the base parallel to VP. The pyramid is cut by a section plane which is perpendicular to VP and inclined at 40 degree to HP. The cutting plane bisects the axis of the pyramid, obtain the development of the lateral surface of the truncated pyramid. We have a square pyramid of side 45 mm, altitude 70 mm is resting on its base on HP. The very very important note here is that the two sides of the base must be parallel to VP. Which means that if I draw a square in the top view like this, if I draw a square in the top view like this, I will get two of its sides parallel to vertical plane. If I draw square like rhombus like this, then all the sides will be equally inclined to VP. So this is the position when we want to use all the sides, all the base edges are, are equally inclined to vertical plane, I should go for this one. If I have a question such a way that I should draw a square, all the sides are, two of its sides are parallel to VP or two of its sides are perpendicular to VP, I should go for this one. Here he states that two of its sides of the base are parallel to VP, so therefore I should go for first one, let me draw the front and top of the given problem. Let me have VP and HP first, draw VP and HP and draw front and top of the given problem. We have XY line, unless otherwise specified we always use first angle projection. In this module 4 also we will be using first angle projection only. So here we have vertical plane, here we have horizontal plane, on the vertical plane I should draw the front view. On the horizontal plane, I should draw the top view. So for solids, always we begin with the top view first. So therefore, let me draw the square in the top view such that two of its sides are parallel to VP. Obviously, two of its sides will become perpendicular to VP. We have a side of 45 mm base. So let me draw a side of 45 mm base that is Forty five, then again I should draw forty five drawn, and then again forty five, then finally connect. So this completes the square of forty and five mm side. So we have a square, we have a square of 45 mm side. Let me name this as, since this is a pyramid, I will name it as A, B, C and D. Now let me locate the center of this square, that is, I locate the center of this square, that is O, O1. If I draw diagonals, the intersection of the diagonals will give us the center of this pyramid O at the top, O1 at the base. Now take projection and lay down the altitude first for pyramid. From all the corners, we will draw slant edges. I take on the projection. First, let me lay down the altitude. Height is specified as 70 mm. So draw 75 mm as the altitude, mark it for the axis. So this is the axis which is specified as 70 mm, drawn 70 mm axis, this will become O1 dash and this will be O dash. Now draw slant edges that is A to O and D to O we have here. So A is visible, D is invisible. So it will be A dash, 
bracket d dash done similarly draw slanted b to o and c to o that is connecting here i'll get slanted b to o and c to o here b is visible b dash and c is invisible c dash and connect the base done so this is about the pyramid resting on its base on hp such that two of its base edges are parallel to vp the altitude is specified let me draw the altitude what he has specified for us the altitude is specified as 70 mm let me draw that this is the altitude specified which is 70 mm now he states that cutting plane bisects the axis cutting plane bisects the axis at an angle of 40 degree to horizontal plane since it is bisecting the axis let me mark 35 mm on the axis let me mark 35 mm on the axis that will be here let me mark 35 mm on the axis take a reference line i'll take a reference line and this distance is known which is 35 mm because it is bisecting the axis now at 35 mm we locate a point on the axis there i should measure an angle of 40 degrees to hp i should mark 40 degrees to hp that is nothing but 40 degrees to horizontal i lay down a cutting plane that is measure 40 degrees so this is 40 degrees now lay down a cutting plane we will have a cutting plane this is the cutting plane done this cutting plane is measuring 40 40 degrees to hp 40 degrees to hp now coming for marking here we have only base edges and slant edges coming for first one we have slant edge a to o so coming for slant edge a dash to o dash it is cutting here so mark this point as 1 dash next go for b coming for slant edge b dash to o dash it is cutting down here so mark it as 2 dash next we have c to o that is c dash to o dash here you mark it as 3 dash which is invisible and coming for d to o here we have d dash to o dash mark it as 4 dash which is also invisible totally we have four points 1 dash 2 dash 3 dash 4 dash none of the base edges are intervened by the cutting plane if the base edges like a to b b to c c to d or d to a is cut by the cutting plane then we should take the measurement from the top view this you people already know which you have learned from parallel line method of development if you carefully observe only slant edges are cutting so therefore directly i can measure from the front view now the most important point to be observed here are none of the slant edges are true in dimension because if you observe here the slant edge ao is inclined to vp if you observe bo bo is also inclined to vp if you observe co co is also inclined to vp do is also inclined to vp we have already learned from the basics of orthography projection of lines that is if a line is parallel to a plane and projection taken onto that plane will always gives us the true dimension if a line is inclined to a plane and taken projection onto that plane itself will gives us apparent dimension here we have ao projection inclined to vp if i take projection i'll get apparent dimension similarly for bo apparent dimension co is also apparent do is also apparent none of these slant edges are true first i should make it true 
and then only I can go for the development of this square pyramid. For that, make any one of these four slant edges parallel to VP. Then only the projection of that line will give us the true dimension in vertical plane. This you people already learned from the basics of orthography projection of straight lines. So therefore, either I can make O to C parallel by rotating it and making parallel, take the projection will give us the true length of the slant edge or I can rotate BO or you can use AO or you can use DO. That is, I will make BO parallel and then take the projection. I will make BO parallel that is, I have made B to O as parallel. I made B to O as parallel. I will call this as B1. So, I will take the projection. Now, if you observe, O to B1 is parallel to VP. So, therefore, B1 to O dash will give us the true length of the slant edge. So, connect this. I will connect this to obtain the true length of the slant edge. Done. Now, I should make use of O dash, B1 dash for the development. Keep that in mind. So, this is the true length of the slant edge. You can observe this is parallel to VP and this will give us the true slant edge. True slant edge. That is because in the top view it is parallel to VP. I taken the projection of a parallel line. So therefore B1 dash O dash will give us the true length of the slant edge. Now if I measure this one, if I measure this one, it is measuring 77 mm. It is measuring 77 mm. So true dimension is measuring 77 mm. It is measuring 77 millimeters. So I should make use of O dash to B1 dash. Keep that in mind. Should make use of O dash to B1 dash. So since I should make use of O dash to B1 dash, transfer all these points 1 dash, 2 dash, 3 dash, 4 dash to O dash B1 dash. That is transfer this to O dash B1 dash. Transfer this to O dash B1 dash. Here also you transfer it. Here also you transfer it. So this will be the reference point for us. This will be the reference point for us. So this will be our 1 dash and 4 dash and this will be our 2 dash and 3 dash. Let me draw it properly. Let me mark it properly. 40 degrees I will show inside. Let me show it properly. So here we have the inclination of 40 degrees here we add 2 dash 3 dash where the cutting plane cuts the apparent slant edge b dash o dash and c dash o dash now i am transferring it to the now transfer it to the true slant edge so this will become 2 dash and 3 dash for development and this length is measuring 77 millimeters Hope you followed. Now, let me go for the development. Now, for development, first you lay down the true length of the slant edge that is O dash to B1 dash, O dash to B1 dash, measure O dash to B1 dash, which is 77 mm, and draw an arc for the apparent angle. I don't know how much is the angle, but just you draw an arc. Drawn. Now measure the base length. Base length is known 45 mm. So measure the base length. So since it is a square, I'll, if I cut it from one of the slant edge and unfold all the faces, I will get 4 
divisions or you'll get four triangles of base 45 mm so therefore measure 45 mm from here or from scale and cut this at equal intervals so you'll get one then we have two then we have three and finally we have four done now connect these cutting points to the center to here connected similarly connect from all the points so connecting which i'll get a o to a o to b o to c o to d and again the closing side will be o to a clear so this is o we have a b c d and again a closing side now on so this is the true slant edge from here only we should measure and transfer so on oa we have point 1 dash so measure it and transfer from o dash on the true slant edge you measure 1 dash measured you transfer it from o on oa you transfer point number 1 next for ob we have 2 dash on the true slant edge we have transferred it so this is 2 dash on ob you mark 2 dash mark next on oc we have 3 dash so 3 dash is transferred here for the true slant edge measure 3 dash so 3 dash will be of same dimension transfer 3 dash next on od we have 4 dash so 4 dash is transferred to the true slant edge it is here measure and transfer 4 dash and 1 dash are measuring same length so therefore you mark 1 dash on oa closing side so thereby we have transferred all the points now connect this we will get the development so connect these markings like this so this is one this is two this is three this is four again we have one a careful observation is that this have slant edges we don't have slant generator if we have slant generator then we will get the surface since i have slant edges so these are all sharp edges mark it very thick so here also we don't have curve we have slant edge so join ab then you join b to c then you join c to d and also you join a to d and connect these things 1 to a 4 to d 3 to c 2 to b and 1 to a so this portion is the development of given problem this is the development this is the development of given problem i'll cut it and remove the top portion i'll retain this development now in the top you also we should show because if i look at from top i can see this apparent dimensions of this slant edges so therefore transfer these points to top you here not avoid confusion let me erase this one done now transferring which on oa we have one dash on oa we have one dash so this is one and this is four here we have two and three this is two and this is three so connect these things three to four 
वन टू टू एंड टू टू थ्री नो कनेक्ट दीज थिंग्स सी टू थ्री टू टू बी देन वन टू डी एंड देन ए टू वन एंड ऑल्सो दी बउंड्रीज the stop portion will be retained and this bottom will be removed i can see only these things i can see only these things so this is how you should do radial line method of development so this is the solution for problem number 6 that's all from this lecture thank you all